eight, and then that's when everything fell apart. Bob Bobby yeah. ran and was running away with the nomination. Yeah. And then he got shot in California. Yeah. Replaced by McGovern, who nobody liked. And um Nixon ran against McGovern. How close to the election did Bobby get shot? Uh it's a good question. It was California primary. He was there for the to he had been he'd been winning everything. Yeah. Oh, so there I mean it was in the primary. It was in the primary. Yes. Yeah. And um was the name of the guy who shot him? It was like something Sir Hans Sir Hans. Sir Hans Sir Hans. Yes. And there's a picture, I mean a famous picture of him laying there. And uh there was yeah, so what, if you look at the picture, there's a guy holding him. You see that guy holding his head? Yeah. He's a busboy, a just Mexican busboy working in a hotel. And it was in the kitchen. Like he had just yeah, made a just speech the- and he was coming through. Just to back up for a second with Bobby, because Bobby was a, an incredible guy. Bobby had a fluid mind of a crackling brain. Like he was like, John was, uh, you know, moved slow. And made politic careful moves. And Bobby was passionate, you know. When my mother, when I when I first got an iPhone, first time I'd ever like ha- held that thing, I took it to my mother's house, and she didn't. My mother was a computer programmer, but this yeah. item was like she, she's like it's a phone. And I go, name any image or moment, it recorded oh, God. And moment. That's what she went with what's that? And that's the one she went with. Just no, let me finish. <laughs> I said, name any recorded moment in history. Yeah. And she said, when Martin Luther King was killed, Bobby Kennedy was about to have a rally, give a speech at a rally of all black people's a black audience, like in some city. And he got the news and he had to tell the audience that MLK had been assassinated. And he, off the cuff, said some things about it and gave a speech, which was just very moving. And I, and I just went, you know, fucking RFK, MLK. Yeah. And played it for her. And she oh, was like, she was wow. like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah. That's so, awesome. I thought, well, I mean, I was close. That's my guess. I thought, sure. you, I thought your mom was gonna be like, if I could see anything in the world right now, it would be him. Getting show me killed. him dead on the so ground. He's, <laughs> so he's show me that mother. So I'd like to see it with blood on his face. <laughs> So he was shot coming out of the through the they were taking him through the kitchen. Um, Sirhan Sirhan shoots him, and this bus boy is the one who catches him. It just was in a melee of people. So a guy who had nothing to do with anything, just yeah. like mm, Senor, so he's got <laughs> he's got oh, Kennedy's no. head in his oh, lap, my, no. and he looks down at him, and he, only he never spoke about it. Like he wouldn't press used to ask him. He just refused to talk about it because he felt the moment was very personal. But he finally, I think, I think I might be dead, but I, I, I saw an interview with him where he said what happened, which is that Bobby said, um, he just asked him, do you have a rosary? He knew he would because he's fucking Mexican. He said, do you have a rosary? And he did. And they gave him a rosary and he basically took his last rites. Holy he shit. He gave Bobby a shot at a Catholic. It's a little death. Damn. Sirhan Sirhan went to prison. I think he's still alive. I think he's still in prison. So he shows up in a great book by the guy who invented profiling in the FBI, the guy who invented like, you know, criminal profile. Okay. Uh, Richard Kessler, something like that. This guy wrote this book. He was the first guy in the FBI to come up with the idea of, of figuring out why, why killers do what they do. They didn't yeah, the, used to wait, do that. The guy for the Mindhunter show? You yeah. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. He, he invented this thing. Yes. So... Uh, and the book is great because it, it it the book starts with a a guy who murdered um, a serial killer who killed somebody in San Francisco, like in Sacramento somewhere in some neighborhood killed a lady went in her house killed a lady, and then killed another lady the next day, and so they they flew this guy in who had become famous for this. He took one look at the murder scene. He said, "You're looking for a white man in his forties who has a big beard. He's living in his car that's filled with newspapers and trash from McDonald's." And uh, <clears throat> if you don't catch him, he's going to do this every day. And they went and found the guy exactly on that. <laughs> so then when that guy was caught, he did the next part of his job, which is was he interviewed him to yeah. find out because these guys love talking. And he asked him 
all the questions so they understand these guys better. And he asked the guy, how did you pick your victims? That's a key thing that in, in finding out how they're going to pick the next one. And he said, um, I would just go to any house and if the door was unlocked, I'd kill anybody in there. <laughs> so it wasn't like she looked like my mom. Yeah. And so he said, I'm putting this in the first chapter to just tell you, just lock your, you're going to just lock your doors. Please lock your door. Yeah. Okay. So that's that funny. Guy, it's funny to just ruin the profiling thing. Yes. He's like, oh no, I don't. No, I just, if the door is unlocked. What are you talking about? If you're dumb, I'll kill you. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, all that, I know I'm getting away from president. No, the point is that guy, uh, once he learned this thing of like talking to the guys, he realized we have all the most notorious killers in federal prisons. I want to go talk to them. And he couldn't get permission because everyone in the FBI said that's macabre and it's inappropriate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then he realized, why am I asking? It's just go to a federal prison, show him my, he's like a gold FBI badge. Yeah. So the first guy he talked to was Sirhan Sirhan. Wow. He shows up and he just says, I want to see him. <laughs> And Sir Han, Sir Han comes. He's like, the kitchen like, was unlocked. You? <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> he said, the kitchen was unlocked. I didn't even know who the yeah. fuck that guy was. <laughs> so he didn't ask. I don't know if he asked him that question, but he talked to Sir Han, Sir Han for a couple hours, and it was a dead end. He just talked to him. He rambled, and he talked about his conspiracy, what he thought was, you know, why he did it. He has a weird story that he thinks yeah. why he did it. And he didn't learn anything, and he thought, maybe this isn't a good idea. He was about to give up on the science of this. And then right before Sir Han left, he stopped, and he took off his shirt, because he works out in prison and he goes, Hey, what do you think of Sirhan now? And he showed his muscles and he went like, Oh, he's fucking vain. He's vain. <laughs> he wants people to look at him. And that unlocked that's you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. So like that uh Hannibal Lecter thing, what does he do? This, you know, he kills women. No, nope, that's incidental. <laughs> yeah. What is the point of the guy? So anyway, that's Sirhan Sirhan. Kill Robert when Kennedy. Did, Sirhan Sirhan's gotta be dead, right? I when was it? That was he 60. still goes out for parole every few years. And they gotta let him out. Oh, that's he's got he's got a couple years, dude. Yeah, he's uh, the best. Is the guy who shot? Oh, well, I guess we'll get to him. Well, Mike Sweeney, comedian, did the best joke ever. He he wrote for Conan for years, but he was a great stand-up. And I'm just gonna I'm, I'm saying his name, so I think I can steal yes. his joke. Mike Sweeney. He used to do a joke about her Sirhan Sirhan at his first parole hearing. He said, I think if Robert Kennedy was alive today, he would say that I should be let go. And he goes, boy, just above of all the bad luck. It's the <laughs> one guy who would have stuck up for him. Turns out it's the guy he shot. <laughs> anyway, Sirhan Sirhan kills Robert Kennedy and uh, Democrats go to the fucking convention in Chicago. Richard Daly and the fucking yippies show. And then, then we yeah. had it's another another time like this. Far way out left yippies. Uh, making a noise and wanting it to be a riot at the Democratic National yeah, Convention, yeah, yeah. not the Republican. They were like Nixon. It was another time like that that it was like, yeah, we all Nix know Nixon's a dick, but let's fuck with the Democrats. Let's yeah. go after the the liberal side of things. And uh, they were uh, there was gas, uh, uh, you know, yeah, there's horses running over people. <laughs> insane. So it was like the Democrats came across as this fucking chaotic bunch. Yep. They end up with McGovern and nobody gives a fuck. It's just this bad sort of like fucking the Democrats represent chaos and drugs and all this stuff. And they and there was no there wasn't a thing of like, let's get together behind McGovern to beat Nixon. That just was yeah. not going to happen. Uh, so Nixon fucking finally, after all those years of his long life in politics, having been vice president for fucking yeah. Eisenhower, having been um, a senator and during the McCarthy hearings, all this stuff. He ends up being president of the United States, 1960, and he gets the people. He does the moral majority, you know, the people that, or what do you call them? The silent, yeah, majority, silent majority. The silent majority. Still and the guys in ha ha you know, ha hard hats who hated hippies, and he counted on that, and uh, it won, and he won. Yeah, it's coming again. We're doing the same thing. Same thing. Exact same thing. Same thing. So then you get to Nixon through four years, and he gets to 72. Now I, have a, I have a question. Was the press gay back then like they are now? <laughs> Were they like totally like? Well, it was a different bunch. You got like Dan Rather and fucking, yeah. you know, uh, uh, you know. I mean, I'm forgetting all these guys' names. It was never this partisan, though, right? No, because there was there was the CBS News, which was Walter Cronkite, and there was uh, NBC and and ABC. There was that was the news was you chose chose between three dudes. 
And there was uh, David Brinkley, and they had to meet the press. They had some stuff they even still have now. Yeah. But it was the only – the press was centralized. There wasn't this sort of like – the the written press was pretty out there. But the TV news was what everybody was really mm. following. And so everyone watched the same news, and uh, then we argued. So it was different. And, and you never had a sense that the press – to answer your question, no. They really weren't gay – Shane, I don't agree with using <laughs> gay that way. He's even making me sound gay because I'm so upset with him. <laughs> My God. So, well, like Cronkite. Cronkite was a picture. It's funny to actually be gay when you're being gay. It's the best. Like to be mad about something. Get a I, poster for that. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. Stop it. Especially this angry gay. Stop it. <laughs> That Shane, is, what's more terrifying? No, that would be if you had two gay dads, there would have been one. <laughs> he was like, Shane, just don't make him mad. Shane, what the fuck are you saying to him? <laughs> Shane. It could be the most terrible. That's the most scary getting yelled at. By your gay dad? By I knew a gay, uh, I gay knew a dad. Number of gay, I knew a number of gay dads and two moms uh, when I was raising my kids. Mm. A lot of their friends had gay dads. And, and I saw every, it's the same as any other stereotype, there are many kinds of heterosexual parents. There are soft-hearted, useless yeah. heterosexual parents. There are distracted, narcissistic, I think I can change my kid's life parents that are heterosexuals. And there's just fucking like, got it, gets it, doing the tough work, heterosexual parents. And it's the same, in my experience, yeah. with gay moms and gay dads. I know gay dads who are just like hard tack fucking I'm not I'm not fucking this up. Yeah. But also I know it's his life that like I, I've known so many kinds. But they all sound like this. <laughs> but anyway. Not really. Kick the ball. Not Kick really, it, but Tyler. It's more, Go. Yeah, it's more fun. The fucking T ball. Well, that's game. what a straight dad sound like. Yeah. But so um gay dads are great. Gay dads are great. Every single one of them. Yeah. Um Walter Cronkite has two great moments that show you what the press was back then. There's the moon landing and there's the and there's Kennedy getting killed. He's in again, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see both yeah. of these. So the moon landing is just you, they show the fucking footage of Neil touching down, which didn't happen. Just, they didn't never land on the moon. And then they cut to Cronkite. Oh, what's his name? It was, was your that? boy. Yeah, it was Kubrick, dude. He did the moon landing. Kubrick did the moon yeah. That's why they gave him all the lenses. Yeah, yeah. Use the lenses for uh, uh, Barry Lyndon. It's true. <laughs> he, Barry Lyndon is a great movie by Stanley Kubrick, yeah. and it takes place in like the 1600s, and he wanted it to look like that, so he used no electric lights. But he needed lenses that drink a huge amount of light, and he got NASA to give him moon lenses. So he did do the moon landing. Yes. Nobody's ever been on the moon. Nobody's ever been on the moon. 100%. You see all the, there's some clues in The Shining. Huh? There's clues that about he the did moon. It. Yeah. yeah, I don't believe this. I think they went to the moon. Mm. But we'll uh, see. <laughs> but <laughs> no, they. I think. I think uh, somebody was trying to argue that in like some Chinese astronomy, they yeah. found there's they, they satellite images of where people landed. Yes, and they're like, and, why uh, would we help cover this? By up? the way, they went up like twenty times. It's not yeah. even that big a deal. But, um, but uh, <laughs> so Cronkite. When they landed on the moon, you just cut to him and he's got this big childish grin on his face. He's yeah. just, he doesn't say anything. He doesn't say, this is a marvelous moment. He just reports, the, well, and Neil has landed. A man has landed on the moon. He says the facts, but he's got a bit, you can see yeah. the feeling, but he doesn't say it. And then the other moment that is just devastating is when Kennedy dies. He says, uh, uh, he gets the report, he gets it in his hand. And he says, uh, President Kennedy has uh, died. Um, he died at 12 o'clock and he, and he takes off his glasses to look at the clock above him because he's reading to look at the clock above him and says, and that's three o'clock Eastern Standard Time. He just reports that Kennedy has died and reports the time and he looks at his local Jesus. clock and then he puts his glasses back on and he goes, sports. <laughs> and he just swallows. Vice President Lyndon Johnson is to be sworn into. He just and there's this moment between where he's taking in that the president of the United States is dead, which without even thinking about who it was was just horrible. Yeah. And then that uh, 
and then that he probably knew him, you know? So, but that was his, he didn't grandstand, you know, you watch the news now and they're just like, you know, oh, and they're just feeling shit. Yeah. And it's horrible. They are not supposed to, you know, like I, when I worked for Letterman, we, the Yankees were in the world series and I got caught up, caught up in it. And cause I was a New Yorker, I'm a Boston guy, but I just got caught yeah, up it was in fun. it. So I got to, we took Larry Bud Melman, this character that Letterman had to, to the game and interviewed the players. And then I got to be in the press box during the game. And me and a friend of mine who was a writer, we're sitting there uh, watching the game and we're cheering <laughs> when the Yankees hit. And then we look and everyone's staring at us like, what the fuck are you doing? You don't cheer in the press box. Like it was like, we're all fans of something, but yeah. shut the fuck up. I think that shit's gone. I think that's all really certainly. Gone. But anyway, so uh, Nixon serves. Also, one more thing about Kennedy, dude. The, yeah. Why go to the moon? It's probably it's probably my favorite speech. We go. We do things. Why, that, yeah, yeah. We choose to go to the moon not because it is easy, but, but because it is hard. Because it's hard. Yes. Dude. And he also, in one of his speeches about them, he had a great joke. He also, and there he goes. Why does Rice play Texas? That gets me every time. <laughs> I'm just like, dude, why are they playing? They get fucking killed every year. That's right. And they're still doing it. Yes. Uh, Kennedy also had a great parable he used to tell. He, there's a lot of speeches that are lost because a lot of these guys, they didn't record every speech. But one of his, uh, he liked telling jokes about Irish guys. So did uh, Reagan. They had that in common. They both used I, like Patty jokes. Yeah. So he tells a story in uh, during his moon um, mission when trying to get people, the money and the, the country behind the moon. And he talks about these three Irish guys walking along the lees of whatever, you know, just crossing the, the great green grasses of Ireland. And then they get to a wall, stone wall. And they go, should we climb the wall or should we go turn back and go home? And one of them takes his friend's hat off his head and throws it over the wall and says, I guess we're going. So that was part of Kennedy's. It's not that good. No, it's anyway, cool. So, uh, and then Nixon's president when they land on the moon. And there's a, in his, in his uh, um, library in Yorba Linda, California, where he was born and raised in his, and the little house that he was born in is there at the library. Um, there's a phone, which is the phone that he talked to the moon on. It's Holy the White House. They took the White House phone. That he made the, you know, it's just a fucking beige yeah. phone with a big white button and a big red hold button. I don't know if he put them on hold, <laughs> but he, you know, talked to, you know, well, it's just wonderful that you're up You're there. up on the moon. You're up there and Jack is dead. Fuck him. <laughs> and uh, nothing and, could stop me now. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, yeah. So he uh, he was president when that happened. And uh, and so 68 turns into the. 72 and now the country's really <laughs> we're watching a movie aren't we we're watching a movie i'm drinking beers watching a movie <laughs> oh, yeah yeah cedar cliff next week <laughs> i gotta focus on that <laughs> i gotta focus on the cedar cliff cults dude uh ryan foster was telling me the story yesterday about how like uh after show he was getting blacked out at a motel and then he just nice. ran out of beers. They went outside. There's just some guy like drinking in the parking lot. He was like, "You guys want some beers?" He's like, "Yeah." And then they go into his room, and the guy has like a, a VR set up, and he just like pays to go. He tells his family that he's on a business trip just to go to this motel for the weekend to play VR games. Wow! And get blacked out, get shit faced, and play VR. Yeah. Yeah. Lie to your family, say so yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just games or just there was a porn. Yeah. Ryan got porn. Yeah. <laughs> You do have to. That's not a bad idea to lie to your family and say I have to go on a business trip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just take a week. It's a classic lie. Yeah, that guy. You told me about that. Or I know. No, yeah, I knew a guy. He, he would take just, two weeks mandatory. Yeah, at Rum Springer every year. He would. He would. He, he's a <laughs> forty-five year old man. Blow, fuck yeah. Rump, it was just hookers, all that for like two weeks. He's like, I got to let loose, and it was just balls. Keeps to the you wall. honest. Yeah, <laughs> he, Keeps lost, you honest back he lost it. They caught him. Those yeah. two weeks became. The life he rump springs, mm. he rump springs. He, he just chose up. to not be Amish, I guess, <laughs> or just not be you know, he got excommunicated from his family. I think they're back. I mean, I don't, yeah, I think they're back. <laughs> I think he's all right, but yeah, it was it got out of there, it got out of control. Him telling me about like a pimp he was hanging out with, and I'm like, mm. I don't know if you should be hanging out with. Pimp. I was so yeah. young at the time, and I was like, why is your scale covered in cocaine? <laughs> he's like, don't worry about that. 
was like, that's not good, dude. Okay. <laughs> that's not good, mister. <laughs> hey, mister. <laughs> hey, mister, that's not Don't good. Don't do that. Pimps, those guys are scary. <laughs> pimps are scary. Hang out with pimps. It was like, freaking me out being like, dude, why are you hanging out with pimps, dude? Dude, man, you have a good kid voice actor. That was voice. actually a really good kid was, voice. That was the first time you've ever done that kid voice. <laughs> dude, that was great. Really? That I've heard. That's a new voice. Thank you, guys. Yeah. <laughs> just came out of it. But man, you don't do any voices. I have, I have some voices. Anime girl. Let me hear a couple. I got oh, yeah. T. <laughs> <laughs> Let me hear a couple. I have, a, I have a Dusty Rhodes. Let me hear it. Is a, excuse me. I got a call. <clears throat> I thought that was the impression. Was that That's you? Let's do. God damn. Yeah. It's a, uh, my, be, my belly may be a little big, but I am the future NWA world champion. That's, that's, that's pretty that much was Bobby, That's cute Kinda. kid What are you 13 <laughs> <laughs> I am 32 years old <laughs> Dude, That's the best scene In any movie <laughs> so <laughs> so You know that guy's Still a virgin <laughs> <laughs> Captain and <Tango. laughs> I know Captain that's your match You're sweating profusely <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's cute, kid. What are you, 10, 12? <laughs> I'm 36 years old. <laughs> dude, Waterboy is so good. Waterboy it's unbelievable. Best, it's so fucking good, dude. It's unbelievable. That's top. That's, that's number three for me. Waterboy for Sandler. the Sandler movies. You got to go, uh, for me, Gilmore, number one. Yeah. Then Madison, then Waterboy. Little Nicky's so good. Little dude. Nicky's fucking Little Nicky's good, dude. Crazy. <laughs> Little Nicky's so good. That was one of those I watched the first time. I was like, "What the fuck was that?" And I put it on again, and was like rolling over. Like this yeah. is the funniest shit ever. There's seen. certain times when you watch a movie that you're gonna love it. So like on an airplane, you know, when you watch a movie on a flight, you're like, "That movie fucking ruled." Yeah. There's also a time you don't remember, but when you were a kid, yeah, and had a sleepover, and you rented a movie. Oh yeah. <sighs> Especially a funny movie. Then dude. you're like, "That was the best movie I've ever seen." Ours was Little Nicky. We rented yeah. it. At a sleepover, and it was like, dude, that's the funniest fucking yeah. movie I've Popeye's ever seen. Chicken is a cheese, man. Popeye's ass. Chicken is a cheese. It's such a, yeah. So good. You put the quarter in your mouth and you, you chew it. <laughs> there you go. You got good little Nicky. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm from the South, <laughs> the deep South. <laughs> That kid, that laugh fucking destroyed yeah, me. Yeah, it's so good. Boy of Dynamite was another one. I saw it the first time. I said, what the fuck was that? I was like, Apollo. I told people to watch it. And then I saw it again in the movie theaters. And I was just like crying. It was incredible. I needed two I needed two exposures. Yeah. I saw Napoleon several times in theater. Oh. And also Waterboy. Those are the two movies I saw multiple times. I swear to God, I saw Waterboy 5. Did you really? Damn. Like an insane amount. Dude, what about White Chicks? <laughs> insane. I never even saw White Chicks. Really? Yeah, it's not it that bad, dude. It's, it's, really it's good. People, it's a lot of people listen to their favorite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen it so many times. It was uh, uh, one I've of seen those. It on TV. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. seen. I've, I've, well, obviously, I've seen like clips. I've seen the shitting scene, <laughs> yeah. seen the singing. Yeah. yeah. Seen the the iconic moments. Really? Jamie Kennedy was the man for a while too. Oh, Jamie yeah. Kennedy, Malibu's <laughs> Malibu's most wanted. Malibu's was fucking <laughs> nice, nice, dude. dude. What else? Did he? That was his only movie he had, though, right? That was the Malibu's most wanted, and then what was it? Kicking it old school. I don't think I saw Kicking it old school. Old school. Yeah. <laughs> he was just like break dancing. He did a break dancing <laughs> competition. Yeah, he was. In, was he in Malibu's man? most wanted? Ruled. Malibu's yeah. most wanted. That was so yeah, nice. Traffic. Was he traffic. Traffic. Mad TV guy. For my chapstick. <laughs> uh, I just started thinking about little Nicky again. He was like Jesus, this Moses, that. I had Abraham in the head. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln in the head with a baseball bat. <laughs> you know, right? like, he's doing fucking... I like when Marino's in there begging for a ring. <laughs> yeah, <with> the devil. <laughs> yeah. All right, we got at three p.m. to shove a pineapple up Hitler's ass. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you liked it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking what's his name's great in it. He's perfect for it. Uh, the peeping tom. Uh, uh, oh, John Lovitz. John Lovitz. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah, it's yeah. the peeping tom. He was in something else. He was in another movie. There's a whole Sandler verse. You know about the Sandler yeah. verse? What? It's just the Adam Sandler DCU. <laughs> it's basically that it's all in the same universe. Yeah. Oh, okay, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah, dude. I mean, has he had a bad one? I don't think. Movie? He, yeah, I don't think he's released a bad the movie. Critics hate. Well, critics, critics hate, hate on him. Demon Rats. Bro. Again, though, the Demon Rats do hate it. Yeah. Especially because I mean, they know deep down Sand Dog's a Republican. Sure, <laughs> yeah. They know. They can tell by his fucking cool humor. But his basketball You know what shorts. I thought sucked? I didn't, I didn't like Grown Ups. Oh, I yeah. hated it. I got to that. I loved Grown Ups one and two because there's there, those movies don't have stakes. There's very few movies yeah. with like no stakes, and I like that it didn't have stakes. It was just 
It was like a move. Adam Sandler's a G for doing this. He does it all the time. It feels like he just like he's like, I want to go on vacation with my friends. Where yeah. do we go and make a movie? Yeah. That's kind of sick. Yeah, I didn't see that. QB Halloween was top notch. QB yeah. was nice. That was <laughs> so good. And you had to stand by. People were giving you shit. <laughs> it's unbelievably. I good. turned it on and gave it an honest appraisal. And I said, "This is pretty fucking funny." It is funny. It was pretty funny. He's dodging funny. stuff while he's riding his bike. <laughs> <laughs> I think QB two comes out this year. I can't wait for QB two. QB two comes out. It's gonna be incredible. <laughs> God damn! We might have a viewing party for that. Yeah, we might, yeah. that'd be tight. Just, we could have a summer party for that for sure. <laughs> When's it coming out? On I'll Halloween? smoke pot. Halloween, yeah. Smoke a pot for here. Both a little of us bit. freaking out. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> True. My parents that'd be sick. Come home you start doing like NDAs of just the fact you're getting a little bit stoned. <laughs> Don't tell anyone I said about. Don't aliens, fucking dude. tell anyone. I'm getting high. Don't tell anyone I said about fucking aliens. <laughs> did I? Did I ever tell you what they? So when I did Lemon Party, did you hear about the thing they said about Leonardo DiCaprio's NDAs? Wait, did you you said you did Lemon Party? It's uh, Ben Avery's yeah. pod. Oh, I thought that was... That's the, Old like, guys sucking each other's dicks? Yeah. 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 It is? Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. They were talking about Leonardo... I can't stop thinking about this. They were talking about Leonardo DiCaprio. His He has like his NDA set up where he puts on headphones. So he'll like, they'll bring in ladies and he'll lay there with headphones on blasting MGMT. And they like sign an NDA, they won't say anything, and they come and just ride out on him. He just lays in a bed in a hotel, in a hotel, and just lets like women please him. They were claiming it's like as true as it gets. I don't think that's cool. I was like, where are you yeah, getting this? No, I like yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio a lot. Yeah. That's crazy. That actually sounds really fucking MGMT is the sealer. It's so funny MGMT for me. MGMT is yeah. just and him just like coming into a condo and just. Next, <laughs> with headphones on his face, was just... dude. It makes me every time I see his movie, I can't look at it the same now. I start laughing and I go like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, I watched a movie last night with like Billy Bob Thornton as a meth dealer. Mm. What was it? I forget what it was called. Monsters. It was Ball? actually decent. No, it's a, it's a new one, but it's funny when they put when they try to cast like old famous guys. Yeah, because their their face is still young. Like at one point, he puts his hand on the kid's face and. His hand's 90. His hand looked fucking insane. Then he go cut back to his face. His his beard's dyed jet black. It looks fucking ridiculous, dude. It's, they keep casting all these famous dudes. Like old. Yeah. Like if you see like John Travolta in a movie now, he looks like a fucking insane person. Yeah. Really? I you can't seen... cast a guy from L.A. in a movie where he's an Appalachian. Yeah. It's like, dude, no one in Appalachia has fucking facial surgery. Yeah. Like this guy visibly. <laughs> <they're> like, <laughs> I'm the king around here. I sell Mac. It's like a beautiful quaff. Yeah. Dude, his beard in it is. Oh his he has a jet black goatee. <laughs> He's like 85. Oh. But yeah, you see his hand. You're like, oh my God. Dude, have you seen Vince McMahon recently? Yes, with the mustache, yeah, dude. Vince like, is out of his who? mind. Yeah, Vince McMahon. <laughs> He looks oh, like uh, Jacques Cousteau from the Pink Panther. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fucking crazy. Let me see him. He's like his hair dyed. He has a muscle. Wow. No. He looks like a male porn star. <laughs> he, looks, he looks like a bad guy. He just looks like a villain. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Did, did you hear there was a new movie now with Mel Gibson? In it? Dude. <laughs> Did he get caught like having an affair or something? Or did yeah, he get... that broke him. I he think just it broke made, him. He didn't make nine point seven billion. <laughs> he looks like a he... Mater D, dude. He looks like a Mater D. He had to he make. He really like... does. He does. He looks like a very good Mater D. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like me to show you to your car, sir? <laughs> Come he... out here, you <laughs> rapist! <laughs> Why is he doing that? Dude? I don't know. Dude. He's, he's, a, he's, he's a poor fish. guy. Dude. <laughs> He's officially a billionaire now, dude. Is he he had to make like five billion off of that deal. What? Wait, where do you see, who do you sell the uh... WWE to Endeavor? <laughs> yeah, the people yeah. on UFC, and now oh. they merged them into one mega company, the UFC M or UFC WWE. Now we're in control of all the most retarded. Oh. <laughs> dude, Vince McMahon is literally every retarded guy in America dude. is under our umbrella. <laughs> dude, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Stormtroopers. <laughs> oh, what was that thing where they probably could make the clone army? <laughs> Damn, dude. Just throw fucking Mountain Dew and Slim Jims and Doritos at these people. <laughs> New 3D Doritos? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> we got to get these. Yeah. Mickey's 40s. 
<laughs> oh my god <laughs> he's a billionaire now sheets is on the fucking ufc podium or on the oh on the yeah post. that gets me yeah. going dude like, all right sheets it's pretty tight sheets is making some noise like, dude. Get it. The yeah. they made it dude we made it baby they're getting attacked right now they have an enemy Wawa's, the enemy's coming Wawa north. and quick trip mm. are all they're all moving in yeah and fucking royal farms too royal farms yeah. bitch ass is coming yeah. up from baltimore way yeah, yeah. <laughs> yum baltimore yum way. brands or some giant food company will just swallow them all up eventually and Although Wawa's yeah, got as soon as I got home, I swallowed up some sheets. Did you? Oh yeah, you're saying you immediately for, off the plane. What did you munch? Got fucking chicken tendies from <laughs> sheets. <laughs> Went home and had a belly ache in front of my dad. Tell <laughs> 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 what you ate. <laughs> oh. I was like, Dad, that girl could beat your ass. Yeah, <laughs> fucking Angel Reese. I would knock her the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Fucking punk. <laughs> oh, having a tummy ache stinks, dude. Yeah. But after you eat it, you go, I think my body's fine with this. Yeah. I think I'm good. And yeah. 30 minutes later, you get the first pang. Oh, you wait, go, why am I, why does my stomach hurt and I'm drowsy? <laughs> yeah. Why am I sleepy? Sure. It's funny. Your body just like completely immobilizes you. You're like, hold on a second. We got to figure this out. Yeah. <laughs> we just ate something incredibly fucked up. <laughs> hold on. Sit yeah. down, dude. Sit down. Also, for the, uh, like, need you off the hunt. You know how when you're a kid, nothing really affects you? Yeah. Like, you can't tell what it's doing to you. That's how I was with grub for a while. Now, if I munch, yeah. now I can pinpoint exactly what just happened. It's coming. Like, it oh, comes that from- was the problem. <laughs> yeah. I just had five slices of pizza. I'm, yeah. My body, I'm just. It, it comes for everybody. It was that what? damn turkey comes bacon everybody. Yeah. I got it. it hit me early in life. Yeah. I would eat something and I'd connect the dots immediately and go, son of a bitch. Son of a Yeah, bitch. I was so used to it having no effect on me. Okay, it can't be the five slices of pizza I had. I always have five slices of pizza. You have to have at least four. I always eat one standing right away. That one doesn't count. Yeah. And then I get two on a plate, and I go, I'm going to have one more, two more. And then I stand for one or two more. <laughs> once, once, especially with the you circular know, pizza. You know. You know. <laughs> the first, the standing slice at the beginning doesn't count. Yeah. That was free money. I did that at WrestleMania on Saturday. I was just... Oh, oh, what was Mania oh, like? What was the little Mania? It was sick. It was kind of stuff. The whole time, I was like, fuck, dude. Fuck. Yeah. Fuck. We do. Fuck, I'm That's a what hurts. fucking loser. That does hurt. That's what hurts. But those are the, they're doing it wrong. We're good at it. We're masters of our craft. We're masters at it. They got greedy. That's the problem. Also, they're kind of serious. True. They're also having America First conferences. Yeah. Where they're on stage and in Mustangs throwing Nazi salutes, <laughs> which... Could be the highest form of comedy if they were joking. <laughs> if if joking. they were. If they were joking, yes. Yeah. That is funny. Yeah, well, that, I, I do think... Now, the pro- it does come at a cost of maybe destroying America, but... True. But the problem is... This is the thing that gets me is they'll get caught. They'll be like dead... Apparently, look like they're serious on a thing. Then get busted and be like, fucking around. Yeah. It's like, dude, if you're fucking around... If, luckily, I can just be like, dude, I'm just an idiot. Yeah. I'm a dumbass. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, it's uh that was jarring. I saw that and went shit. Yeah, maybe Fuck. being an edge lord is not as cool as we thought it was. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> God damn it. But again, you know, tool fun of messing around is fun. Yeah. But yeah, as soon as if well we can't what we can't do is just start at an organization. As soon as you start an organization anyway, join the Patreon, subscribe. <laughs> but like don't yes, really of course, though. of course. No, it is just for Buy yucks. Buy our shirts, pay us, not an organization. Yeah, it is just for yucks. Yes. Letting that be known. I mean, dude. we are actual comedians. I like that we're talking ourselves out of, we're not fucking all right, guys. Are we white nationalists? <laughs> Fuck. No, definitely no. not. I'm, I honestly am, and I'm not just saying this for the optics, dude. I'm, I love immigration. I'm pumped on it. I agree. I think it's cool. You know, I'd like, like to control the border a little. Can't well, just be letting fucking all these guys in, you know? Yeah. I like to go down there and say, you, yes, you, mm. <laughs> I might get a job down there. I might get a horse. <laughs> get on a horse down yeah, there? Yeah. Patrol the border. Yeah, it's just so funny. It's like, dude, we're going to have immigrants to be like, well, we can't have infinite immigrants. It's like, you're right on that, sir. Yeah. It's thankfully, like, there's not. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, that's not going to happen yeah. because, you know, we do have dudes down there on the ponies being like, hey, yeah. halt. Halt, sir. Stop. Your journey ends here at the goal line. <laughs> Damn. How far did you go? 1,500 miles? <laughs> that is a sick goal line stand. Yeah. Although I do get excited. They when do I stuff them at the goal line pretty hard, dude. <laughs> <Some dudes. laughs> I have heard tales of uh, 
I've talked to immigrants and they tell me their like tale of getting into America. So I touched the delicious patient <laughs> with my I, foot. I saw that. I <laughs> it was <laughs> I like hearing the tales of how people got into the country. That always does excite yeah. me. I hear about it. I was talking to someone who came in when they were like a, I think like a six, 17 year old girl. And I was like, Jesus, that's so you scary. Like that story? No, I don't like it. I was scared, dude. Don't you even dare. Don't you even <laughs> what dare. What do you like dude? about the story? Dude, don't you even dare. Dude, you're ruining the fucking movement. You're ruining the movement. Damn, man. it sucks we can't start over either on this. We have I to know. keep all the white nationalism <laughs> shit. <laughs> we can talk about whatever else. Oh, dude, the big announcement, dude. The big announcement's crazy. That's crazy. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, I'm excited about the Too big, big announcement. Yes, I almost blew it this morning. What do you mean? I was in bed. I'm such this is, I'm such a fucking dumbass, dude. We have the big announcement to make. It's, you know, it's huge. And I go, "All right, I'm going to get up tomorrow morning at like 5:30, get a jump on traffic." And uh, <laughs> we had to wait. That's why I will not be in the Patreon. We were supposed to be starting I'm so, earlier. I'm so sorry about that. I have to get on a plane yeah. shortly. So, so I woke up. I was like, I'm going to be on guys. the road at 6 a.m. If I get there an hour early, that's just what I'm going to do. It's not a big deal. And uh, <laughs> but I'm such a dumbass. I didn't set an alarm clock. Yeah. This, this is how this is truly how incapable of stuff I am. I like all of a sudden at 550, I'm, I was having a dream about being with my cousins who all do like cool act, like uh, landscaping, hardscaping work. So I ha they were like trying to figure out how to chop, chop down the street that was grown in a house. And I had this Ryobi pole saw that like, for some reason, yeah. it's in my house and I've used it to chop stuff down. I put a hole in my back door with it, chopping nice. branches down. <laughs> <laughs> Every time these dudes were building, they'd be like out there fucking with these branches. Like, yo, I got a Ryobi pole saw if you guys want to borrow it. So I was like, Letting everyone in this neighborhood's borrowed my Ryobi, Ryobi pole saw. It's a big, it's pretty cool point of pleasure of mine. Yes, these guys had like sheer branches off, and they're doing crazy. It's just, it's just a great thing I have. So in my dream, my cousins were doing this big Where time do you keep job it? in my basement. Oh, nice! It disassembles. It, it goes apart. Battery powered. It's fucking disassemble your weapon and continue. <laughs> Gump. <laughs> Why did you put that weapon together so quickly, Private Gump? <laughs> because you told me to. So I'm in my dream. My cousins are scratching this their is heads. Your company <laughs> they're scratching their heads, and they're like, "What are we gonna do?" And I was like, "Guys, I'm gonna go get my Ryobi pole saw. I'll be right back." And I'm like, "They're gonna be so pumped from the Ryobi pole saw." My wife wakes me out of just a blissful dream, and I just wake up. And I said, "Babe," she goes, "You got to get up." And I was like, "Babe, babe, where are you? Where are you, babe? It's dark in this room. I want to touch you." She said, babe, babe, you're late. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Oh. And I woke up. He said, like, it's the podcast. Thank you so much. Literally woke me up from the best dream yeah. ever. I was like, what would I do without you, man? I was out. I would have slept into like fucking who knows what time. If if you hadn't. Yeah, I said I, I was hitting snooze. I was like, nice. Matt's not here yet. Matt's not here yet. Oh, Finally, dude, I saw a missed call 10 minutes before. I was, I was like, shit, he's definitely outside for the last 10 minutes. No, nah, I was barreling up the yeah. road. See, I was on the road at 6 a. I've been staying awake too late at night playing Mount and Blade Bannerlord. Oh, I can't fuck, stop that playing game fucking it. rules. It's insane, dude. Yeah. Yesterday I got done with Set Life. Not a big deal. Wrapped on a series wrap for Shane. Yeah. You're done. Yeah, I'm out. Awesome. It's pretty cool, though. When you're done filming a show, they the producer yells, that's a, that's a wrap for Shane, and everybody claps in the room. Really? There you go. <laughs> Guys, thank you for having me. It means a lot Keep to me to have me on here. No, Matt, <laughs> you used to be all right. What are you talking about? Oh, oh yeah. Please. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I'd get home. I'd be out of work. You'd go, I'd come home. You'd be watching YouTube. You'd be like, check out Milo Yiannopoulos. Get the fuck I'd out of like, here. Dude, you're this guy if sucks. you're going to slander me, get the fuck out of my house. Get the fuck out right now. I got a live stream. Sean, switch the camera. I got a live stream right now. There's definitely a photo of me doing a Roman salute. There's <laughs> got to be. No way. Sometimes they're funny when you're drunk. And <laughs> There's no, no photo of a Roman salute. salute. I don't throw a Roman salute. A Roman salute. I better not throw a Roman salute, dude. Why? Well, I, I hope nobody does. Oh, man. That was tough to watch. What, but there's thing? also the thing where it's like, I don't know. These are all, it's just a, I, I don't want to get back on the topic, but it's just <laughs> like, dude, these are dorks. They're internet. They're fucked, dude. Yeah. They're a, they're a, they're a result of society. They're not a, yeah. they're not changing anything. They're just. Yeah, it's, it's just it's people. A problem. It's all of everyone's belief systems got blown apart. Now they're like slowly reassembling and avoid from yeah. it's. I think we're getting inoculated to demagoguery, though, in terms of just like guys can get up there and be like, and then your kids and everyone's like, yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, everyone now like a random dude can just hit the playbook of just like a a demagogue. 
Yeah. You just can't start gaining a following. It's just like a primal thing that like hits people. Yeah, we have always course. had that. What? That. Like, if a guy gets on a fucking stage and sounds good. Yeah. Everyone in the room's like, I love that guy. And if you're pissed, if you're already, and most people are pissed and like just utterly disillusioned, yeah. and the guy starts being like, you know what the problem is? You know, you're going to start being like, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Dude. But you're telling me I'm right and everyone else is wrong. I kind of like the so, idea of that. I don't, know what, I don't know what about that. That sounds good to me. I was listening to, I've re listened to Ghosts, on the, Ghosts of the Oss front again. Oh, yeah, boy. Dude, don't let the fucking fringe bros take over. Yeah. It's bad news. Yeah. It's the worst news ever. Yeah, I've listened, dude. dude, it's about Russia and Germany in World War II. It's the saddest. Yeah. It's the worst shit ever. Yes. When the, the, the atrocities when the Russians came back are so bad. And then they're like, yeah, this is revenge. You guys did this. And the Germans are like, yeah, we did that. Oh. It's bad, dude. They're like, just, just demolishing everyone get Everyone got raped. Really? Like indiscriminately, they were oh. like when we got it. They would get into towns and be like, "We're not doing this for sex. We're doing this because we hate you guys." Jesus. They'd rape grandmas, kids, everybody, ah, both Terrible. sides, everybody. Mm. They're getting everybody. Yeah, and they were a like, bit of a game of tag. Is tag? Oh man, that resulted in like yeah, women being like crucified to barn doors and shit oh. and they'd go to the next village and do it again yikes lines of dudes they would rape them to death this is what i'm going to sleep to rape them you to can't death? let the fringe guys win dude no because this is what happens the yeah. bros to yeah dude i watched a uh how been, about that that's a good part of the podcast that's a good, that is a good part <laughs> just so you know in our 80 years ago women were being raped to death on the eastern front hey jesus christ yeah. that what was the what was like the big actual has anyone pointed out the big like is it just financial pressures that drives these countries into war? Or is it just pure like a guy being like, "This is the problem"? Like, how do they act? Have they ever gotten down to how they actually actually start? Because there's like, if a guy attacks your country, if you're like a little like a you know, you take it back to like the year thousand, you're just chilling in a village and dudes start like kicking the walls and you're like, "Hey, what the fuck?" Yeah, that's a pretty legitimate <laughs> yeah, cause of war. Yeah, come on, get the fuck out of here. That's a pretty legitimate cause of war. But like when it goes, because I know they like isn't World, World War One? Don't they not really know why? Yeah, World War One was pointless. Yeah, they don't really know why. Then World War Two was just what? Like Hitler was just like World War Two was a result of World War One. Got you. I mean, that's how that's how history works. Everything's, they said everything's a result. Let's run that back. Uh, no, yeah, Germany kind of. Felt like they got fucked. I mean, losing a war, I could see feeling losing like that. Losing a war, so they then got you got fucked. millions of dudes <laughs> coming home. Like, that was for nothing. Oh, no. Everybody found out that was for nothing. And then yeah. they were like, wait, who's at the top? Why would we ever do that? Yeah. And then they took over, and they were like, all right, let's do that again. <laughs> and they, <laughs> it resulted we're gonna in the We're going to do worst. it right this time. Yeah, we're going to... We're going to invade Russia. I mean, it is tempting, I guess, because then the United States kind of came out pretty good on the end of world. Didn't it worked they? out for us. Yeah. Didn't it come out pretty good for yeah. the old United States? Yeah. All of Europe got destroyed. Yeah. The United States became the financial center of the world, the world I mean, power. That has been dictating who is in charge of the world. Pretty and it much does make you forever. feel good. Every once in a while, it makes me feel good that America isn't is a, as you know, it's as good as a fucking empire can be. Compared to what those dudes were doing 80 years yeah. ago is, it was no good, Matt. It's terrible. It was literally, the, it's the worst thing of all time. I mean, Vietnam was pretty bad. Weren't we just burning no, people? It's not it? even fucking close. Dude. Really? No. It was. What was the worst of Vietnam? They well, would, they would lose, just the Russians would lose more than we lost in Vietnam every day. Phew. Every day. Yeah. More than we've lost probably in Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, everything combined daily oh. for like five years. So numbers wise, it was worse. But numbers wise, it wasn't comparable. Not even close. Not even comparable. Jesus. It was. What yeah. was it like? 20,000 dead? They'd lose guys. They, Russia and Germany would lose more guys in one battle than the U.S. lost the entire war. Yikes. We lost 600,000. And Russia was on around. our side back then? Russia was on our side. Just losing thousands of fucking yeah. dudes, and then what? Why did why did it all fall apart? Why aren't we boys? Because the way they were, they were evil. They were pretty bad. We it was evil versus evil over there, and we were just 
We were like, uh, let's let these two kill each other, <laughs> oh, and then we'll invent rock and roll and destroy the other evil one. Uh, we killed them with the power of music. True. <laughs> we did. We hit them with the guitar riffs. Like, hold on, Elvis, hold it. Shake your hips. Shake your hips, Elvis. Destroy them, Elvis. Blue jeans. Send in the blue jeans. They, they had witnessed nothing but horrific atrocities. Oh. They were like, blue jeans. Uh. <laughs> Put down our sickles, boys. Damn, they imagine watching dungarees. Die Hard after that, too. That's what? Imagine watching, watching die, die Hard after. I thought just... you were changing the subject and be like, I was watching Die Hard. No, I was no, like, no, good no, call. No, good call. No, no. This imagine just what we catching want. Die Hard after that. She's like, that's crazy. That's so fake. And they're like, no. Nah, no, yeah. All what, the buildings building exploded. <laughs> all the buildings blowing <laughs> yeah. up into town. I don't see that. Jumping out of it. Yeah, it's, it sucks, man. America yeah. got pretty lucky. But yes. now, but I, it is. It's got to be tempting because I always imagine these like leaders of states and societies like are very, very well versed in history and like military history. I don't think they are. Really? No. You don't think so? I guarantee if you walked up to Joe Biden and was like, what what was the Battle of Kursk? Yeah, I guess so. Be like, what? What? Hey, (laughs) Tony boy, fuck you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, maybe so. Donald Trump, just be like, Donald Trump, what year was... You know, yeah, but don't you think that that's how that's not how you're versed in history, of course, for sure. But I, yeah, I guess you're right. But I'm thinking of like, there's definitely dudes that are have their hands closer to the levers. I think if I think if people knew more about history, I think we'd be doing better. Yeah, I guess you're right. Because the way we're sliding into fucking bullshit, bullshit is it is a little alarming. Yeah, it stinks, dude. Only because if you know what could happen, which is that, yeah, which is. You're dead. You're gone, and then all of your mothers, and sisters, girlfriends, and wives are at home, and a thousand guys show up and chase them around, and yeah. they're laughing. The women are like, "Ah, kill me!" Yeah, and the guys are like, ah, ha, ha, ha. and then they rape them to death. Jesus Christ! Yeah, yeah, that was what and like stick a baby on a bayonet, smash it. Ugh. That was, that was what eighty? You said eighty years. Not even a hundred years ago. Eighty years ago. So there's people still alive. Yeah, you, you, people listening right now. You probably have a grandpa or grandma that's. She was born then. She was alive during this. Be, even being alive like thirty years after that is like enough to feel the effects. Yeah. That's right. when all of our parents were. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. That's why they're so whacked. That's why they're a little wacky. Imagine this. You're talking to your friend. <laughs> Dude, I've, uh, I've, I shouldn't have done this, but I. <laughs> I don't know what possessed me to do this. I did an absolute <laughs> and a pretty evil thing to my dad. We we're talking. He was like talking about one of his bros. And I, I don't know. It, just in the moment, I was like, yeah, as he's talking about it, I'm like, yo, is that guy gay? And he's like, what? Yeah. No. no, what? no. You want to do something bad. Dude, I, I was like, why did I do this? this he completely was just like, well, no, what the hell? <laughs> Started like, why, why do you think that? I'm like, I'm just fucking around. And I can see him just being like, how the fuck is that funny? I'm like, it's funny. It is funny. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> To dude. catch a dude off guard, just dude, I'm telling you, we were talking. If he's talking about any of his bros, be like, "Yo, for real, is that guy gay?" They'll fucking melt. Be like, what the yeah. fuck are you talking about? Because they instantly go, "What the fuck? What the hell is going on? What's happening to me?" I can't even hit Phil with that anymore. Yeah, I've, I've used it. You've used it all. Up. I've used it up so many. Anytime the guys on TV, I'm like, "You like that guy?" <laughs> when we watching sports, we'll be like, "Yeah, he's good." I'm like, "You want to kiss him?" I'll be like, "Yeah, Shane." Like, <laughs> Ooh, I'd like to kiss him. Isn't that right? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, my dad doesn't fuck around about that shit. Being gay, yeah, you can't. If you're a man, if you're no. an old man, you, it's not even funny. Don't dude. you fucking joke? It's about not that. funny, dude. You want to know gay? <laughs> I was watching White Lotus. Do you watch White Lotus? I watched the first episode. Bro. The last uh, the end of the last episode. I didn't see it. Vicious. I didn't see it. I mean, <laughs> dude, the first, you see the first season? It's a classic butt fucking dude. <laughs> did, you, did you see the first? <laughs> classic dude on the end of the bed <sighs> on his knees. Bro, they the first season, they had a guy getting his ass eaten. Like, graphic. Yeah, I did see that. Graphic. And it was like a cliffhanger Maybe where it's like you're waiting. That. I was like, I wonder what's happening. What episode was that? Late? Yeah, it was later uh, I on. I didn't see that. Dude, oh my God. It's Steve Zahn's cox in it, too. Who? The guy. The one, the dad in it. In the first season, the dad with the girls. Oh, he's he makes a return? Apparently, his penis is in season one. I didn't see it. Is it really? I didn't yeah. see it. I don't remember. I must have blacked oh, yeah, it out. He's looking for like cancer on his nuts early. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah now I remember. Yeah, that might, that is currently, I think, the funniest show out. White Lotus might be the funniest show. This, this one's a little... Season two is not that funny. I only saw the first app. It's very uncomfortable. 
The it dude, is funny. It is your style of comedy too. Yeah, it's, it's everyone's kind of scheming, fucking up. Yeah, one of the funnier things, dude. But it's uh, it keeps you on edge. It's very uncomfortable. Yeah, but the everyone's dude, fucking up. everyone's fucking each other. Yeah, cut it out. Dude, the guy, the guy in the first episode in front of the other dude's wife putting a bathing suit on, <laughs> like showing her his, showing her his ass, made me laugh very hard. Wait, did you see in the first? Wait, which yeah. episode of season two? Yeah, the guy's massive cock. You thought it was huge, Matt. <laughs> Matt, what do you think when you saw that cock? I was watching with my wife, dude. Yeah, how and uncomfortable I, was that? I was I, watching with my girlfriend. Dude, I said, so Don't, you I heard like you guys. That. I heard you guys talk about that, yeah. and when we were watching, she was like, "Want to watch White Lotus?" So I was like. Fine. Damn it. <laughs> I was like waiting because I was like, I knew there was a gigantic hog coming, and I remember yeah. Spud being like, "You saw it from behind. You can see it from behind. Yeah. You can see it from behind, dude." Yeah, I kind of, I just kind of, me and my wife just both went silent. We both went, <gasps> went silent and passed. Like, thank God. I thought it was a full frontal dong, like up front you hammer didn't address shot. It? I addressed it. To me. I gave it a beat. I was like, I didn't even bring it up. I didn't even bring spoiler it up. Spoiler for the guest. Yeah, I didn't even, oh, yeah, you see this guy, you see the guy yeah. from uh, the Divergent series, Penis. That sucks, too, because that actually is, I believe, you believe it's that's a cop. celebrity crush for my wife. She actually does like that dude, because he likes, he's in like a, he escaped from like the craziest realm yeah, of handsome, like. handsome, famous actor with a massive cock? Yeah, bro. I, that might be fake, might be prosthetic. I, that's kind of the angle I'm, I'm taking. I'm banking on prosthetic, I'm dude. like, dude, these weird prosthetic dicks are crazy anymore. But I don't know. It probably will. If I should freeze, when I go home back home, I'm going to analyze and freeze it and just like match skin tone. Yeah, that was, I mean, but did he work something up is the question. It was still pointing straight down. Yeah. I guess when true. your cock's that big, you can be pretty hard and have it. It's too much weight. Things. Well, it must be crazy for that. It's just like a hot, rich guy. And they're like, look, we have the scene. If we need help, he's like, no, I actually also have a massive dick. And like, perfect. It's got to be pretty, uh, you know. Pretty annoying. He does play. I was I was complimenting his acting. I was like, he's, he's Francis, a, dude. He's a good actor. He reminds me of Francis Ellis. Really? Yeah. There's parts the way he talks a little bit. He, he's like I a Harvard like, guy. Obviously, Francis isn't a scumbag. No, for sure. Well, if Francis had taken like more martial arts because I know him more from the Divergent series. Yeah. So it's like I know another. What do you side mean, Francis has martial arts? If Francis had more martial oh, arts oh, training, oh, that guy oh. has more of like a martial arts edge. Wait, that guy does martial arts too? He has to, dude. You, dude, I fucking hate did you, this well, guy. I'm saying, did you see the Divergent series? Of course not, Matt. What? Did, no. Number four? That's his name. He's number four. Yeah, dude. He plays like... Wait, is it, what is Divergent? Diver... Yeah. The book that turned to... Yep, dude, you yep. watched this shit? Yeah, I watched, I watched all of them with my wife. I watched all of them with my wife. You my wife to, you fell in to, love with him because he's like... You need to like, take the power from your wife, dude. This guy's penis, that guy's penis is in it, and it's, it's the star of the show, dude. I'm not yes. Gonna, no spoilers. I didn't see that episode yet. Yeah, I mean, he probably does, but. <laughs> Dude. I'm going to find a picture of this guy's dick. You think you're going to find the pic? <laughs> Definitely. That thing's iconic, bro. It's, I mean, it's decent, dude. It's decent. The guy. Yeah. Yeah. I think my wife is fond of him and she made it known. And then it was like. I'm she's, fond of him. She said in the very beginning, I mean, I like his undying allegiance in the Divergent series. He found ah! his penis. <laughs> <laughs> Gardini found is, it, dude. Gardini found it. That's got a little lift on it. I don't want to slander the man. That's got a little bit of lift. Gardini, yeah. what do you think? I, it looks like an udder. <laughs> <laughs> you can milk that thing. That dude. thing's <laughs> preposterous. He's lifting dude. his leg up pretty high too. What's this guy's problem? I mean, for real, they should blur that stuff, dude. We should, uh, we need some decency, dude. Yeah, it's there's a, a you, in this season. I, I, I just feel like nobody's putting America first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to go to the American Patriot <laughs> Conference. <laughs> that will drive me to the. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's dick. You know what? The Jews. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this: that I watched a funny. There's a Kanye clip from Piers Morgan that made me laugh a lot. Which one? He's like, Jewish. <laughs> Piers Morgan's like, actually, Kanye, that's quite offensive. And he's like, oh, is it quite offensive? <laughs> he's like, Jewish. <laughs> yes, that guy's cock may drive me to do, it, attend CPAC this year. You might go to CPAC. I You'll might go get to in. CPAC. If you get, if I get out, I'm gonna storm off, dude. If like, I don't go in, this. I'm gonna go fuck this, fuck <laughs> CPAC. We're starting our own across the street. It's where we're gonna be even in more CPAC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is funny though to be like Legacy Media is dying. We're the new thing. It's just Kanye West on Piers more like Jewish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I think people uh, can just take it like people can take a nice sabbatical from information. I think. 
I certainly have. Yeah, it's I'm, good. I've retreated back to World War One and World War Two. It's good. It's honestly, try. I'll be back on the Civil War shortly. It's time for me to revert back to the classics. The absolute classic. Yes, I need to fall back in love with Ulysses S. Grant. Yeah, that'd be that's a, that's honestly a good move. Yeah, I mean, dude, I, I just I've talked about it a hundred times, but I I can't imagine getting so ramped up on the internet and like being like I'm actually showing up to the political rally. Like, dude, when they're showing the footage of Charlottesville, mm. it was like. Kids. I remember watching Charlottesville and just laying on the. It was. I remember exactly when it was mm-hmm. and where I was. I was. It was the day after we did a live podcast at Helium, mm-hmm. where we were being a little obnoxious, yeah, racially, we're having homophobic, <laughs> all that stuff, yeah. And I was like, "This stuff's not going to boil over." <laughs> we're just joking around. Yeah. And then I was laying on the couch, hung over, watching Charlottesville. Like, oh no, <laughs> no, I'm part of the problem a little bit. <laughs> no, of course I'm not, but. And watching Charlotte, everybody there is a complete fucking dork. Yeah. And they, they'd like throw stuff at each other. And we were watching, like nerd. They, it was all nerd spazzes to get away from objects. Yeah. Like where you like hunch over and run as fast as you can to get yeah. like bumping into shit, trying to run away. Yeah. Just watching like just there were just nerd particles bouncing off of each other. It's like, no, I'm fine. Fuck you guys. You guys win. They just, tr- they just like grab trash can lids and collide. It's a shame. Oh, it is man. honestly, it is a shame, dude. There, it's the, yeah. They shouldn't. They yeah. Why, how did they get there? That's, that's what the, I'm that's, saying. That's, that's what we gotta ask. You that's what I'm you saying. You can't just be like, no, those are Nazis. No, it's like, dude, that's a, he's desperate, dude. He's it's, lonely. There's something going on now. I'm getting into JP. I guess I'm telling you, dude. It's for it's. it's you can't the make real, excuses. It's for these the real people, deal, dude. Or you're one of them. No, dude. These guys, all of them, dude. The the guys who are dressed in all black were like, no, I'm actually a communist. I'm a communist. The guys were like, well, I'm not really a Nazi, but you know, like, we had a couple of Roman salutes. What the yeah. hell? <laughs> <laughs> Just colliding. In. It's a shame. It's a, it's an honest. It's a it really, has died down though, right? I think so. I feel like it's died down. That's, I I think it's gonna. Yeah, it I was think at so. a fever pitch back then. Proud Boys had it, and then Antifa that, and that got crushed. That was like, uh, you know. They had their thing going. That created a power vacuum. And now I think the Flint man came in and started filling it. I, th- I think people just That's don't. old, though. That is that old? Is old. Yeah, I don't think people give a fuck about it really anymore. It decide, no. It's just going to start losing its kind of, you know, it's going to start but losing You watch a documentary story. like that and you're reminded of how fucking gay that was for so long. Yeah. It was like three years, four years of just. Yeah. Five, even a year after. Yeah, it's kind of just starting to stop. The pendulum's finally swinging back to yeah, the middle. Or maybe everyone getting grounded. The whole country got grounded for two we years. We did get grounded. We got two grounded, years. dude, for two years. We had to stay inside. And we we needed that, dude. We a needed cool, a, good a cool grounding. down. Now it's not good. Yeah, it's bad that it happened. But a if you cool word down. it like that, if you word it as a grounding, cool down. Although during the cool down, it was kind of the worst it's ever been. So yeah, it was bad. <laughs> yeah, maybe the grounding. Yeah, wasn't people good. were struggling before, and then they lost literally like everything, yeah. and had to, they had to sit in their home completely unequipped to like deal with their thoughts and feelings, and had to stop. And they were just, and then you know, most people lost all their money. I know exactly how to handle it, dude. Mom and dad's basement. That's the NCAA that's 2014. The bomb shelter. It was. I wish I could go back. Dude, my, yeah, that would be fucking Actually, nice. I can. I was going to say, yeah. No. I, might take a, I might ground myself for a year. You should buy, buy like a piece of their backyard and set up like a four-story tower and just look <laughs> down upon your parents. <laughs> just a real narrow structure. I should buy their house. With an elevator. I might just buy their house. And lease it to them. And find out what the ordinance is on on how many stories I can add to it. <laughs> <Build> <laughs> Make it like six stories. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, my... Uh, Brittany brought up a decent point in terms of the student loan relief. She postulated a theory, and I actually think I agree with her, that it was all a ruse to go. Because they did. They signed you up. They approved everybody, by the way, for student loan forgiveness. And then they sent you an email like three weeks later being like, ah, we were so close to give it like knocking $20,000 off. These fucking Republicans blocked us. And it's like there's no way their lawyers didn't say like oh this is actually unconstitutional yeah they just ran with, i agree this is what i think that's happened. true i think that's true and they ran with it and they dude imagine what that does someone's like yo i'm about to get 20 g's knocked off my loans like yeah ah, fuck the republicans blocked the republicans us republicans fucking blocked it dude. i think it was bullshit I, I think they knew that it wouldn't happen this is the nonsense dude this is the total nonsense Damn. that's why we should go full jubilee they should do a full jubilee just be like <laughs> let's do the, the it's good it's a good move Every seven years, the Jews had a thing where they were just wipe debts. Everyone was like, all right, fucking, let's all start over. 
That's not. You can't do that. Let's all start from scratch. Can't do the that. Jews did it. It worked for them. They would be like, let's jubilee. But when? When? Like six hundred BC. Yeah, <laughs> there's like ten of them, and three of them died every seven years. They would all be dead. They did, back then, the extra. I think what it was like another guy. We were all like, living in fucking mud huts. Yeah, and be like, fuck it, wipe it. They'd be chickens. Let's just coats. go try to find some food. Yeah. Well, I nowadays, mean, yeah. Well, everybody now, would just never pay until seven years. I mean, imagine trying to track down your money. You'd be like, "Where's that guy again?" Like, yeah, he moved. He's gone. He's you know, no. He's record. a mile away. We'll never find he him. He might be dead. Yeah. Yeah, dude. The um. <laughs> yeah, I guess that wouldn't really. <laughs> I, I don't know though. But then I think it. I don't know. Would it work? You could wipe out student debt. Like the economy wouldn't like collapse. It would I think be, it might. If you wiped out student debt. Yeah, I think all of us. That's like all of our country's money. The student debt. I think doesn't everybody have like, yeah, tons of money in debt. A couple hundred thou. Like, that's kind of sick though. That I don't, even, I don't. I mean, understand if you think anything. about it, if you think about it, you might cl- complain about your student loans, but if you think about how rich that makes our country, it's like, how about you just shut the fuck up? Yeah. How about you shut the fuck up? Yeah, it's sick. It's so sick that our country. I fucking love billionaires, dude. The fact that you're giving your country that much money. For, Not I even would your say, country. Uh, it's just going to like two guys. <laughs> 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 but then it trickles down. It does trickle. Shane, down. let's let me tell you about economics, dude. And yeah. then if you if you give your money to the right rich people, it trickles down back it's on. It's gonna you. come right back. And to then you. the Dems cut off twenty grand, mm-hmm. and they'll they'll do it. They'll Dems get blocked. They were blocked. ready to cut off twenty grand, and then they got blocked, dude. Yep. The Republicans said no, hell no, because they hate you and they're racist. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, dude. Are all Republicans racist? Yes, and are, then yes. But wait, are all, are all Democrats? No, not, not a single one. <laughs> it doesn't lie in their hearts. They're incapable of it, Shane. I don't know if you know this, dude. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but they're spared from that part of the human condition of biasing. Matt. They're spared, and they just want to give you money. And there's these racist guys who are just like, they like, no, fuck that. We hate immigrants so much. We're going to block. <laughs> it's so fucking dumb. Yeah, we're it's, fucked. No, I don't think, I'm telling you, I think it's going to be just, it's all going to collapse. It's starting to collapse in terms of just total nonsense. And hopefully dudes are going to be able to, well, I don't know. The internets have been, or the, the schools have been kind of like dragged into the whole thing. If there's like schools that come out and they're like, dude, you have to learn how to literally ignore all this stuff and just start a fucking shoe shop or something, dude. Just make enough money to pay your bills and chill. Yeah. But yeah, it sucks. It sucks, man. It yeah. Stinks. I don't have a. F- I, I, yeah. If we continue down a path of just wild shit, it's, eventually it's going to get wild. Yeah. Everyone's, everyone's taking, taking, taking. And it taking. will be bad. Yeah, dude. It's something's going to, it's something like actually, because now it's kind of like, you know, I mean, it does suck. Yeah. Now it's like, you see this fucking trans teacher? What a freak. Yeah. If it, it could get to the point where it's like, damn, they raped that town. Yeah. <laughs> it's happened. You got to watch out. Oh, uh, yeah. True. You true. You don't want your town getting raped while you're dead. No. You're in a fucking prisoner of war camp in Russia and your whole fucking family gets raped. Yeah. That would stink. I, I do. I, that's my big that question. That is a possibility. I do wonder. I go, dude, could could something like that happen? Yes. The dude's it's all, not only could it happen, it's always happened. Yeah. Forever. So you're telling me the dudes with trash can lids or the black no, block anti they won't be the ones to do it. They won't do it. They're the dorks. They'll never be the ones to do so it. So we'd have to get like bombed. I guess if you get bombed, you get pretty charged up to where you're like, yo, if I get in there, I'm not saying... I don't think we're anywhere close to that right now. Yeah. Something like that. But it is weird. It seems to me. I don't know. It's not like I have any fucking concept of what this is. I'm thinking out loud. But yeah, I'm just literally talking until I have to get on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making noises. It is, it is funny. In like 30 minutes, you'll just be sitting there with your hands folded on your lap. <laughs> yeah. I'll be sitting there like, what the fuck was that podcast? No, it's good. Why did I say those things? Um, I don't know. I don't know how these these people got fucked. How'd they get there? What in the past, in World War, World War II, all these massive events? How'd they get there? That's what I'm trying to figure out. And it's not like we're technically but, like you're. It's easy to sit there and be like, "Well, they came out of monarchies, which was a mistake." Now mm-hmm. we're better than that. It's like, are we? Yeah. We don't know. Is this a step? For, who knows? No one knows if we're better or more equipped for handling. Oh, I don't know what the fuck I'm trying to say. It's people's lot. People are trying to handle their Help me lives. Out here. Help me out. I know you're saying. <laughs> yeah, jump in. The Tag average human being is trying to handle this their wrestling. life. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> average human being is trying to handle their life and make sense yeah. of it, and it's just hard and makes people sad because we're gonna die, 
everyone's going to die. Yeah. And everyone's going. You're going to die, but try not. Don't just be a try to make sure it's it. not getting raped to death. Exactly. That's but it. It's, the problem is people are going to die. They they come to grips with this and they go, I don't like the thought of that very much. It's yeah. like, I'd like to have some part of me live forever.